Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstube.tv and today I have my Before You Buy The Mini 2. Now this is a series that I have on the channel where I kind of just break down some of the pros and cons, my initial impressions and some really important things that you need to know about the Mini 2 before you pick it up. So I've done this for lots of other drones and cameras on the channel. So if you're new here then make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell so you're notified on all of the latest and greatest tech hitting danstube.tv. If you own the Mavic Mini or the Mini 2, or even if you're thinking about picking up the Mavic Mini or the Mini 2, then definitely make sure to join the Facebook group that I set up called Mavic Mini Australia. It is open to people all over the world, but we kind of have a focus in on Australia. We do have worldwide competitions, worldwide events, and some really fun stuff going on. So if you want to be a part of the best Mavic Mini Facebook community, then definitely make sure to join Mavic Mini Australia. I'll have the link in the description below to check it out. Now, moving on to the brand new Mavic Mini, also known as the Mini 2. It's had a slight rebrand from the original Mavic Mini. They've removed Mavic and they've called it the Mini 2. Now, it does have a lot of similarities with the original Mavic Mini. It does have a few improvements over the Mavic Mini, but it's still that same great form factor. It's still underneath 250 grams, which is major for so many people out there. And it does have a slightly improved flight time of 31 minutes. But some of the biggest things about the Mini 2 are the 10 kilometer video transmission, which is significantly better than the original Mavic Mini. It also has the same controller as the Mavic Air 2, which is kind of a unibody design where your phone just kind of sits on top in a new clamp system, which allows you to keep your phone case on. You don't have to remove your phone from the case and then slot it into the bottom section of the controller, which we've been used to for such a long time now with DJI drones. But this new design enables so much more freedom when using the controller. So that 10 kilometer range is massive. And when it comes to that 10 kilometer range, I've tested the Mini 2 in some very populated areas. I've flown it for quite a distance, still keeping it within line of sight and flying as safely as I can. But in quite a populated area, the OcuSync 2.0 with that 10 kilometer video transmission makes a massive difference. I had no issues with interference. I had no issues with it dropping out or even struggling in the slightest so that range is phenomenal and that's probably one of the biggest drawing cards about the Mini 2. I actually rented the Mini 2 from the D1 store and they're a phenomenal company. They're a DJI authorized retail store in Australia. The coupon code is MMAFB. That's MMAFB. That stands for Mavic Mini Australia Facebook. Check that out. You can save 10% on accessories, drones, and cameras. Massive deal for you guys. And if you do want to pick this drone up from either Amazon or the DJI website, then I'll have some links in the description below as well to check it out there. So you have a few different options to kind of see which one feels right to you. Now back to the Mini 2 and why this drone is such a beast. We also have a level 5 wind resistance, which is a slight improvement over the original Mavic Mini, which is crazy to me because when you actually look at the drones side by side, there aren't too many differences. They look pretty much the exact same, besides a few minor tweaks that you'll only really notice when you have both of the drones in your hands. Now the first thing is that on both of the front arms, instead of using the foam now to pad out the arm and cover the cables, it's now a hard plastic, which just kind of goes along with the plasticky feel of the drone. So that definitely gives it a little bit more of a polished feel instead of kind of a bit of foam sitting in there. That's the first thing you'll notice. The second thing is that it now has a light on the front. This light is customizable. You can change to different colors and kind of program it in a very simple way, which is a fun thing and it allows you to kind of see the drone if it's facing towards you. Gives you an idea of which way the drone is facing, whether it's rear or front, you'll have those two different lights. But besides that, they're pretty much identical to the naked eye. Now when it comes to the level five wind resistance, I did notice that the Mini 2 handled the wind a lot better. Now the Mavic Mini always impressed me. I thought it did an amazing job of handling high winds. For 
such a lightweight portable drone, but the Mini 2 definitely controls the sky a little bit easier than its younger brother. Now the level 5 wind resistance from my understanding has to do with the motors being a bit more powerful and a bit more efficient. Now I don't know whether the propellers are different. We did change the propellers from the original Mavic Mini onto the Mini 2 in one of my previous videos and it still flew. The propellers look pretty much identical besides the slightly different coloured tips and that's pretty much it. So from my understanding the motors are slightly more powerful in the brand new Mini 2, which allows it to have that level five wind resistance. The Mini 2 is also capable of 4K video. Ultra clear 4K video. I've been extremely impressed with the quality so far. This video will be uploaded in 4K. So all of the drone footage that you'll be seeing is from the Mini 2 shooting in 4K. So you'll hopefully get a sense of how crystal clear the 4K video is. I've been very impressed with it so far. That being said though, I was extremely impressed by the Mavic Mini's 2.7K video. So it is a big increase from 2.7K up to 4K, but I'm impressed with both of them. So I guess this video is just kind of getting a sense of whether it's worth you upgrading from the Mavic Mini to the Mini 2. Um, if you have some other drones, maybe this could be a really cool companion drone for traveling. Or if you're brand new to the market, then this could be the perfect entry level drone for you. I guess that's what we'll kind of cover as we go through this video. But the 4K video from the Mini 2 is phenomenal. It also allows users now to finally capture raw images, which is something that people were requesting almost on a daily basis for the Mavic Mini. They wanted it in a software update, but we got it in the Mini 2 in the form of raw capabilities and 4K video. You also have a few different intelligent flight modes and quick shots, uh, which is fantastic. And there's a few additional ones that you didn't get on the Mavic Mini, but for the most part, it's a very similar offering. You can't active track or follow, and that's something that you can do with third-party apps on the Mavic Mini using Lychee and also drone link in the coming weeks. By the time you've probably seen this video, it's, it's probably out. And I suspect that follow tracking and waypoint modes will all be available through an SDK that is released to developers. And then Lychee and drone link will make it available for the Mini 2. That's something that's pretty much guaranteed as long as that SDK is released to those developers, then we will probably see those three modes that everyone really wants for the Mini in the Mini 2. Another really cool thing to be aware of is that the original Mavic Mini batteries fit inside of the Mini 2 and they work perfectly fine. So if you already have some batteries from your Mavic Mini, it could be a really cool thing to upgrade, get some additional batteries, and then you will have hours of flight time. It's really cool that they've actually thought of that and allowed it to work. The Mini 2 batteries do not fit inside of the original Mavic Mini though. That's something I've tested and you can see right now. But it's cool to know that the original Mavic Mini batteries fit perfectly fine in the Mini 2. That's something they obviously would have had to think about and something that they've accounted for to allow people to use the original Mavic Mini batteries. That's a really cool thing and it allows people to maybe even get some cheaper batteries instead of buying the new Mini 2 batteries. Another cool feature that's only available on the Mini 2, the Mavic Mini did not have this, you get a few different zoom options. So if you're in 4K, you can zoom two times. If you're in 2.7K, you can zoom three times. And if you're in full HD or 1080p, you can zoom in four times. Now this is a little bit of a gimmick as the quality does drop significantly, but it's a cool feature to have nonetheless because it allows you to potentially scout out an area. It allows you to zoom into something before you potentially fly closer to it. It gives you an idea of the landscape and it's a cool little thing to look at and kind of a bit of a gimmick nonetheless, but it's a bit of fun. And that's something that's exclusive to the Mini 2 and something that was not available on the original Mavic Mini. If we're to look at some of the exclusive offerings from the Mini 2 over the original Mavic Mini, there are definitely a few things here that might catch your eye. The first thing is you have raw capabilities when you're taking photos. So that means that you have a lot more room to play with now, a lot more detail in the image, and it's a massive selling point for photographers who want to get more out of their drone. 
Now when it comes to the photo modes, you also get a few more modes with the Mini 2. So you get single shot and interval, which we had with the original Mavic Mini, but then you also get AEB and then the panorama modes, which you get sphere, 180 degree, and also a wide mode as well. And when it comes to the video capabilities, we mentioned the Mini 2 obviously has that 4K at 30 frames per second, but the bit rate is also 100 megabits per second over the 40 megabits per second that we had on the original Mavic Mini. So both of those are quite a big selling point for a lot of people. And then on top of that, you also get one additional quick shot mode, you get Boomerang. So you get all of the original quick shot modes, you get Rocket, Droney, Circle, Helix, and then you also get Boomerang as well, which is just an additional mode that some people might like. So the Mini 2 definitely is an upgrade, but when you look at some of the specs on paper, it's very similar. So the resolution on both the Mini and the Mini 2 is 4000 by 3000 pixels. It's also using the exact same sensor. So it's one over 2.3 inch sensor. So they both have effectively the same sensor and the same field of view as well. They both have a focal length of 24 millimeters and a field of view of 83 degrees. So on paper, they look very similar. It almost looks like they've kind of limited the Mavic Mini to only be able to shoot in 2.7K. And then with the new Mini 2, they've made it a 4K capable sensor. So correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks like it might just be a software limitation that stopped us from having 4K on the original Mavic Mini. But besides that, who is this drone for? Now, if you already own the Mavic Mini, then this could be a decent upgrade for you. I think it's more so kind of towards the people that want to get their first drone. This would make the most sense if you have the additional money to play with. Now, is this worth an upgrade from the original Mavic Mini? It's hard to say. It really is hard to say. If you like need 4K, which for most people, 2.7K and 1080p is enough for pretty much anyone who's uploading to YouTube or just sharing some of their videos on Facebook or with friends or family. It's ideal. You really don't need 4K. But if you want to kind of take your footage to the next level, then sure, get the additional, you know, 4K footage plus also the raw capabilities is a massive thing. And then also the range is another big selling point of the Mini 2. So if you really feel like you're limited in your capabilities with the original Mavic Mini, if you feel like 2.7K isn't enough, if you feel like you're missing out on raw, and if you feel like you don't have enough range from your original Mavic Mini, then yes, the Mini 2 is ideal. Sell your original Mavic Mini on Marketplace or Gumtree or eBay or whatever you use, and then pick up the Mini 2. That would make a lot of sense. Uh, if you are getting into the drone market, then yes, this would make a lot of sense for your first drone if you have the money. But again, if you don't have the money, then the Mavic Mini is going to be fantastic. You know, it really depends on your needs and your budget. Um, another big thing is if you own one of the bigger drones like the Mavic Air, the Mavic Pro or a Phantom, then this could be an ideal travel companion. It's ridiculously lightweight. It's so addictive to fly and it's probably the easiest drone to just get up and take off, you know, like you can even hand launch it with ease. There's lots of options. It's extremely capable and it's a lot of fun to fly with. It's also tiny, so you can fly in between tiny little gaps and have a lot of fun with it. So it really, again, it's not a clear cut answer of yes, you should get it or no, you shouldn't get it. It really depends on your needs and your budget, but hopefully that helps out guys. It's a really good drone and it could be a fantastic upgrade. It could be a fantastic addition to your drone army, or it could be an amazing starting point if you don't own a drone. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, um, if you have a scenario, drop it below. If you've got some ideas around why you would want this drone, but you can't decide, then let me know in the comments below and we can kind of figure it out together and see whether this is the right drone for you. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. Make sure to have a splendid day and Peace out.